What's up, comics versers? I'm Mark Hassenfrotz here at C2E2, and I'm flanked by two comics legends, Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. How's your con going so far? It's uh, been fantastic, but you forgot the part about our Jell-O Wrestling Championship match that's going to be <laughs> later on this evening. That's going to be great. Really looking forward to it. How's your con going, Scott? It's been good. It's been really good. This is actually the first con that ever invited me when I was like a nobody, when I had one issue of American Vampire out, and they paid my way here, and I remember I handed it out with Raphael to people, and I would watch them walk like 20 feet and then throw it out. And then I would get it off out of the garbage and like wipe it off. So this con has like a very dear place in my heart. Is like it believed in me when I was no one. So I, this is actually I think my my fifth time here. So cool. I've been here a lot. I love this one. Cool. So, so what we've learned is that you relate this con to trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I have a couple questions for you guys. So what was it like for you the first time you did a comic? And we're gonna start with Greg and go over to Scott. The first time I did my very first comic, you mm -hmm. mean? Well, uh, first the dream had come true, right? So I'm, I'm elated, right? The, the child dream. Here it is. I'm doing it. And then, deadlines. What is that? It's the thing that kills you. And uh, so I remember just drawing long, long hours and realizing, wow, I always thought this stuff was just put together with a magic wand, you know? Because you open it up and it's all magical. But now I go, wow, this is really, really hard work. So it was like, uh, you know, an awakening. You know, so the dream came true, and I was fully awake to the horrors of deadline pressures. What about you, Scott? Yeah, I mean, I had a lot to learn, man. I was like 25 panels on this page, and, you know, I remember going into my, my local shop, uh, Fourth World in Long Island, and i have been going there for years and being like, guess what? I got a chance to pitch for a comic, you know? Give me everything you have on the original Human Torch. And they had, like, this much, because it was, like, the robot one, you know? Mm -hmm. Not the not Johnny Storm. And, uh... No, I mean, and, and ever since, it's been a dream, man. I think the thing I love the most about comics coming from a prose background is how collaborative it is. And that's the thing. Like, writing is a very lonely profession, as is drawing and, and everything. And when you when you have find a medium like this where you're coming together and making something as a team, it just opens up a whole new world of kind of 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 camaraderie and this this feeling that you're making something organic with somebody you're inspired by, and it's great. So it was, it was a very fast, like, kind of very fast ride for me you know I feel I still feel like my head's spinning a lot from I've only been in it five years so I've just been six years so I've been like rocket ship just non-stop great so do you guys have any rituals that you do before you sit down to get to work uh, that help the creative juices get flowing well again we tend to rely on jello you know we're uh, being into the jello you know and uh, we tend to use lime jello because I think uh, green inspires me I don't know about Scott <laughs> but I kind of talked him into the lime jello but uh, now, outside of that, there's no real rituals. You know, you just have your coffee. That's, I guess that's a ritual. I have my coffee, which I use Death Wish coffee, the strongest caffeinated coffee on earth, and that gets me started. And that's, I just start rolling. Drink, roll. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of, like, people, like, mystify a lot of, like, writing and drawing where they're like, you know, do you need to get inspired or whatever? And the truth is, it's just, it's work. Like, you got to get up, I take my kids to school, I come back, and by 9.30, I'm working. Like, I'm in my desk, you know, and that's it, you know, and whatever whatever gets you to sit down and realize it's a trade, it's labor, it's doing it, it's the hard work and practice and all that, you got to do that, you know. Don't don't let it become something in your head if you're an aspiring writer or an artist, where it's like you have to wait for the inspiration or it's something magical or poetic. There is, like, magic to it, and there's tremendous fun to it, uh, but it's, it's work, you know. You got to get there and punch in, Spend the hours in front of the computer and, you know, make sure you, 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 you really clock in and, and put in the time. Cool. Because, again, deadlines. Yeah, deadlines. deadlines. Yeah. All right, great. So what have readers responded to most out of uh, your works, either on Batman or anything else you've done? I think the biggest reaction we got was probably when we switched to um, Cherry Jello. You know, it was, it was really a surprise. They were so accustomed to uh, stewing the green jello thing. And then uh, when we said, nah, we're going to switch it up to cherry. I mean, I mean, at first, you know, there's always the fans who are used to what you've done. They don't want to change, but they, they adapt. And I think they adapted to the cherry jello wrestling very well. Okay, Scott. I feel like, you know, fan, it's funny because every arc that we've done on the book, they've been, uh, we've tried to do stuff that's a little bit daring. So, like, you know, from... Court of Owls introducing the idea that Bruce might have this brother uh, to Joker coming back with his face off to Zero Year redoing the whole origin to Jim Gordon as Batman and Joker might be immortal and 
everything we've done, I feel like there's been an element of risk uh, that we've really believed in. And the thing that's been wonderful about the fans is when they see the thing, like the ads, and they don't understand what the story is, they might get a little bit mad at first where they're like, oh, I'm throwing the book away. But the thing that the sales have proven uh, and that the fans have proven coming here and being so supportive is that they might get mad the way I would get mad if I saw something I didn't understand, but they'll always stick around to see if you have a good story. And the fact that they've stuck with us and kept the book over 100,000 for five years nonstop, like, I'll never have a ride like this again, working with one of my best friends, like my brother, and having fans that are just the best in the world supporting us even when we try things that are daring and risky. So it's been, it's been a real pleasure. Well, that's a great relationship to have with your fans. So um, Batman has been around for a long time. And, you know, people love him. People have loved him for a very long time. What are some things that you try to do to make Batman your own? Well, with me, it was uh, mostly about the look because, you know, Scott's stories kind of shape the other side of that. So, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I want to do with Batman is one of the things that, you know, every other artist probably does is they do like a, a spray painted on cow where you have all the furrow lines and everything like that. And I just, you know, works great. And I understand you you want it that way to show you know emotions but uh i wanted to streamline it you know i guess frank miller's work in dark knight returns inspired that is because you know uh when when batman dons the armor to fight superman you know it's just got that flat bull nose and i just thought that looked so tough and badass you know and then it was pointed out to me oh your batman reminds me of space ghost and as a kid i love space ghost i had the coloring book and everything you know <laughs> so i go I, I guess it's a blend of those two things that i i did the cow so i try and make it very feature less I, I think it looks more intimidating without all that stuff and the other thing is like everybody does uh you know the spray painted on bat suit to like a a, a contest ready bodybuilder and and i just you know i just don't like that you know it's every hero looks that way and whatever and i just i wanted my batman to be more like a slab of meat you know uh, like like uh, like an off-season bodybuilder, right? Because I know guys, you, you know, they're they're not ripped to the bone, and they're very dangerous, and they're very big, and they're very heavy limbed, and everything like that. And they're guys you would never want to mess with, and they're imposing just by their appearance. And so, you know, I tried to make my Batman that way. You you could you could be muscular and imposing without being like just it's a little bit beyond belief when I see those those figures done the other way. So that's how I try to change them. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, writing Batman, the thing that I'm proudest of that I think makes him ours is when I was growing up, you know, Batman was somebody who kind of scared the bad guys back into the shadows, and that worked for, like, 1980s New York and the Dirty Harry kind of feel of that time where it was about reclaiming the city and all that kind of stuff from crime and corruption. And and nowadays I feel like our problems are much more national and global and we're a bigger community. And so the things I worry about for my kids aren't necessarily specific to New York, they're more uh, far-reaching problems like, you know, gun violence and race and class issues and, you know, all of this stuff. So we've tried to make our Batman about, instead of kind of, you know, scaring the bad guys of those problems back into the shadows, inspiring good people to come forward and be the kind of heroes they know they can be in a post-9-11 world where there seem to be these gigantic kind of nebulous threats always. So I'm really proud of that. You know, I feel like we've tried hard to sort of shift, shift sort of the locus of his of his uh, of his inspiration that way so I hope I hope I hope people have liked it in that regard I think they have uh, judging by the long lines of you guys have had like all day today it's insane so finally last question what kinds of stories First, do you I, I just gotta let the secret out right my wife who comes with me at all the cons she goes to all the homeless shelters and and she try and we pay them you know to show up so that we overinflate our lines so that we, we look like big shots <laughs> You know, and we actually buy extra copies ourselves to make the price and the number of books we sell every month look bigger than they are. And so this is really just an illusion. But you know, don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's a good things. business strategy. It's mostly my mom. It's my family. <laughs> and my mom. Great. So, final question: What kinds of stories do you like to tell, and what motivates you to tell them? Well, I mean, you know, he writes the stuff, right? So, uh, that, but from an artistic standpoint. From an artistic standpoint, you know. I, Obviously, you get into the superhero stuff for all the big action stuff and the cool hero stuff. But, you know, uh, I don't know if it's because I'm older or whatever, and you live more of your life and you understand, like, emotions better. Uh, but I really like uh, the character interaction, the regular characters, out of costume, and uh, bringing those real things to life that everybody relates to. 
right? So that involves like a lot of subtle facial expressions, uh, body English, gestures, that kind of stuff is a real joy and challenge for me that I, I, I love that equally, if not more, to the big action slug out fests. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think the challenge is, you know, taking these characters that have existed for 75 years and have these legacy of stories and trying to tell stories that are personal to you about what you hope they'll save you from uh, in terms of your fears about yourself or the world or save your kids, you know, from in terms of their fears about the world or themselves. And, you know, being on a book with somebody like Greg, for me, I think the aside from the types of stories I like to tell, the method by which I like to tell them is having a partner like him who I feel like the more room I give him, the more latitude he has, the more the story becomes something that's visceral in mine and and both of ours at once, where it's so much exactly better than, like, exactly what I wanted, but better than I imagined it. I enjoy that. I enjoy that process tremendously. So, you know, it's been a real pleasure on Batman so far, where we've gotten to do what we want and tried to do some stories that mattered to us and had a blast together. So it's been a, it's been a great ride. That's really great to hear. Anything you want to tell the people at home about any uh, projects coming up? Uh, yeah, well, Scott and I are going to part ways for a short while. I'll be working with uh, Mark Millar, Mark Miller, however you like to pronounce it. I prefer Millar. Sounds cool. And uh, so I'm hoping to hit a grand slam, you know, of kick-ass magnitude, you know, because uh, who doesn't like money? I happen <laughs> to love money. I like to roll around in, uh, if I had enough of it. So I'm hoping for a real Hollywood grand slam with that, you know, and uh, be back working with Scott on a secret project. Ooh. which is so secret we don't even know about it yet so Ooh, spooky <laughs> all right yeah no i mean i'm i'm gonna stay at dc for a bit i have some bat stuff planned i'm very excited about comics like i was saying earlier it's so collaborative like it's really about working with people that make you better at what you do because they're so they're so good it, it sort of changes how you think about your own craft and for me like that's 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 just a goal and i feel like i found somebody in greg and some of the other people i work with as well but really greg above all where i feel like I become a better writer from working with him, whether it's on Batman or a bigger DC thing or something our own or whatever. So I feel very good about the future that way, you know, just, you have your, you, I, I believe in those priorities, you know, I believe in those priorities, not trying to top yourself when it, <laughs> well, always, <laughs> right? The, I, you know, not trying to top yourself just for sales purposes or superhero purposes, but challenging yourself where you work with people to make you better and that's it that's the benefit of getting to work in a collaborative medium so great so unfortunately we're out of time thank you both so much for your time and comics versus if you like this video be sure to like comment share and subscribe you can check us out at comicsverse.com for more in-depth comics analysis and theory and you can also follow us on social media at comicsverse on twitter facebook and tumblr until next time i've been mark they've been great have a good one